So you, as the ancient philosopher and mathematician, have concluded that in order for the multiplication of positive and negative numbers to be consistent with everything that you've been constructing so far, all of the other properties of multiplication that you know so far, that you need a negative number times a positive number, or a positive times a negative, to give you a negative number, and a negative times a negative to give you a positive number. And so you accept it, so it's all consistent, but it still does not make complete, concrete sense to you. You want to, you want to have a slightly deeper intuition than just having to accept it so that it's consistent with the distributive property and whatever else. And so you try another thought experiment. You say, well, what is just basic multiplication doing? So if I say two times, if I say two times three, one way to conceptualize this basic multiplication here is really repeated addition. So you could view this as two threes. So two threes would literally be three plus three. And notice there are two of them. There are two of these. Or you could view this as three twos. And so this is the same thing as two plus two plus two. And there are, and there are three of them. And either way you conceptualize them, you get the same exact answer. This is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to 6. Fair enough. You knew that before you even tried to tackle negative numbers. And now let's try to make one of these negatives and see what one of these negative and see what happens. Let's do 2 2 times 2 times negative 3. And I'm going to make the negative in a different color. 2 times negative 2 times negative 3. Well, one way you could view this is just the same analogy here. It's negative three twice. So it would be it would be negative three, and I'll try to color code it. Negative three, and then another negative, another negative three. Or you could say negative three minus three. Or, and now this is the interesting thing, instead of over here since it said two times positive three, you added two three times. But since here it's two times negative three, you could also imagine that you're going to subtract 2 three times. So instead of, and up here I could have writ, literally written plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, because this is a positive 3 right over here. All of a sudden, since we're dealing with a negative 3, we could imagine that this is subtracting 2 three times. So this would be su subtracting 2, subtracting 2, minus another, subtract another 2 right over here, subtract another 2, and then you subtract another two, another two right over there. And let me color code it, make sure I don't get the colors messed up. And you have another two right over there. And notice, you did it, once again, you did it three times. You did it three times. So this was a negative three. Essentially, you are subtracting two three times. And either way you conceptualize it right over here, you are going to get negative six. You are going to get negative six as the answer. Now, so you're already starting to feel good about this part right over here. Negative times a positive, a negative times a positive, or a positive times a negative give you a negative. Now let's take to the really unintuitive one. A negative times a negative, all of a sudden the negatives kind of cancel out and give you a positive. Why is that the case? Well, we can just build from this example right over here. Let's say that we had, let's say that we had negative two. Let's say that we had negative two. Let me do it in a different color. Let's say that we had negative two, I already used that color, negative two times, times negative three, times negative three. So now we can do it a couple of ways. Actually, I'll do this one first. We're still multiplying something by negative three. So we're going to repeatedly subtract that thing three times, whatever that thing is. But now that thing isn't a positive two. That thing that we're going to subtract three times is a negative two. So let me make it clear. This says we're going to subtract something three times. We're going to subtract something three times. So subtracting something, subtracting something, subtracting something three times. That's what this part right over here tells us. And we're going to do this, we're going to do it exactly three times. Over here was a positive two that we subtracted three times. Now we're going to do a negative two. Now we're going to do a negative two. And we know from subtracting negative numbers, we've already built this intuition that subtracting a negative is the same thing. It's like taking, it's like taking away someone's debt. It's, like, it's the same thing as adding a positive. And so this is going to be the same thing as 2 plus 2 plus 2, which will once again give you, once again give you positive 6. You can use the same logic over here. 
Now instead of adding negative three twice, and really I could have written this as I could have written this as negative three up in this example, negative three, let me write it this way, negative three, negative three, and we added it. We added it, and I'll write a plus out here to make it clear. Over here we added it twice. We added negative three two times. Over here, since we now have a negative two, we're going to subtract negative three twice. So we're going to subtract something, and we're going to subtract something again, and that something is going to be our negative three. It's going to be our negative three. So negative, negative, and put our three right over here. And once again, subtracting a negative, it's like taking away someone's debt, which is essentially giving them money. You're going, this is the same thing as adding three plus three, which is once again six. So now you as the ancient philosopher feel pretty good. Not only is this all consistent with all of the mathematics you know, the distributive property, the associative property, multiplying something times zero, all of these things that you already know, it now actually makes conceptual sense to you. That this actually is very consistent with your notion, your original notion, or one of the possible notions of multiplication, which is as repeated addition.